Hi, my name is Georgia O'Terry and welcome to another episode of the Humans and Wildlife Show. With me today, as usual, is my co-host, Dr. Christian Sase. Um, Christian, why don't you tell us what we're going to talk about today? Hi, Georgia. Nice to see you. And hi, everyone. So Georgia already introduced us. So I think this is episode 19. Is that right? <laughs> Before we start. I think so, yeah. Gosh, we're getting to 20. That's amazing, isn't it? So many weeks already. And it's wonderful to have you all here. So today is really special because we're going to celebrate the American Heritage Month, together with uh, the artist Michelle Alexander. We've had her before. We did something before, actually on Eagle's Drawing. And we're going to talk about something very special about the symbolism of the turtle and also the lunar cycle. So uh, without further ado, let's get Michelle on and she'll tell us a lot more and we'll discuss this then. Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Ani Boujou. Yes, it is Native American Heritage Month in the United States. Um, but also just uh, just really excited to be here because of this month. Um, I myself am Turtle Clan. So that's kind of special to me personally. So in my language, how I introduce myself includes talking about my clan and where I'm from. So the Guageki Ishkodekwe is a Turtle Clan name that I have. My given name is it means Autumn Earth Fire Woman. It's a Turtle Clan, like I said, Turtle Clan name. Um, so I say Dwageki Shkodekwe in Dishikas. That's I'm also called Michelle Alexander here and Native Graffiti on social media. But first and foremost, that, that's the name that was given to me because of where I'm from and who I am. So and, and my family relation. So it goes by um, you know our our clan which is turtle and specifically actually it's the snapping turtle if anybody knows anything about Mackinac Island the name Mackinac Island Michelin Mackinac Kong menacing uh in Don Jaba is where I say I'm from that is the snapping turtle not just any old turtle but the snapping turtle so I think that's kind of you know nice to kind of correlate that relationship and then of course um uh, I'm from the Mackinac Band, the Turtle Clan of the Ojibwe Nation, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada, Canada and U.S. It's a border tribe. So that's where I'm from. And my nation is the Anishinaabe Nation. That's the language we speak. And the word Anishinaabe just translates to me, the people. So, Ani Bujou, hello. <laughs> hello. Yes. And, and as you is, that, is that right? Bujou, is that how you say we it? We do yes. that. Yeah, we do okay. say Bujou. We do say Bujou. So. <laughs> Good. <laughs> But yeah. well, wonderful to have you. Is is it is my understanding correct that um, that that you, that the tribe that you belong to is about the second biggest um, of uh, in in North America? And I think there are about one hundred and seventy thousand in the U.S. And you were talking about Canada too, about one hundred fifty thousand. So. It's, I believe it's more so. Spread, yeah, spread across I, the border, right? I believe the Cherokee Nation in the United States is one of the largest in terms of membership. Um, the Navajo Nation is also very large, and the Ojibwe Nation. So we're up there in the second or third. But the Ojibwe Nation is the one nation that transcends borders because obviously before yes. there were the political relationship of Canada and US, it was all North America. And of course we're on both sides of the border and I just happen to be a dual citizen because of that relationship. You are. So Very yeah, good. I am. That's why. <laughs> Come and visit I, me. I, yeah, exactly. I am Canadian and American. So, um, you know, I, I love that. I have that distinguished and I like to tell people I am from three governments and three nations mm -hmm. because of uh, belonging to my tribe in that first nations first nations is what we say in Canada isn't that right <laughs> yes. yeah so yeah there you go so that's that's a long-winded in the introduction but that's who I am and where I'm from and it's all important because I think a lot of people can relate to this where you are from is the landscape and the environment that you live in. So you pretty much, if you're from, you know, Milwaukee, you have a certain accent, you have a certain affinity for Green Bay Packers and other things that are associated with being from Milwaukee. So I kind of think that that's, you know, um, the way I feel about where I'm from. And it just happens to be part of our language and how we conduct ourselves and who we say we are, because we're always doing that. When you meet someone new, the first thing you say is, oh, where are you from? So, you know, I think that's kind of uh, nice that we can do that. Yeah. 
That's so cool. And on, I had no, I had no idea actually about like the being Canadian and like a U.S. citizen thing. That's that's mm -hmm. a pretty cool um, aspect of that. And speaking of people being from all over, we have a lot of guests here today already. We that. have you know Susan North, <laughs> yes, David yes. Howden, Kit Harvey, Guru Giri, Kim Misino, Misino, yeah. Um, Frankman, uh, someone whose name is in a font that I cannot read. Hello, um, Hi. Malik Bengish Khan, Paula Hill, Peter Bittner, um, Sheila Country, Nancy Kaye. Well, we just have so many people. Shantosh Jagadi, welcome everybody. It's so wow. great to see all of you here. Um, Michelle, I was curious. So, you said that you're from the turtle group, sorry, the turtle clan. Like, yes, the what, turtle clan. So, is yeah. like what? Is that geographically based as well, like within the Ojibwe group or? Not necessarily. Um, actually, it's more like who your family is okay. and who you're related to. Um, it just so happens that the Mackinac Band, which includes the Great uh, Lakes area on both sides of um, Lake Huron and Lake Michigan in that central location, um, Mackinac Island being kind of the center. Mackinac Island in itself was is is also nicknamed Turtle Island, but Turtle Island, yeah. as we all know, is also and not just our culture, but many other cultures like Korean cultures. Turtle Island is just another reference for the world for the world or the earth. And um, what what it basically means is, um, I think the word totem is something that's in English you guys can relate to. Um, that is actually an Ojibwe word, a totem. It means, this is my clan. I am from these people. So it's an extension of your family, like who you're related to, and the responsibilities that you have as a group. So within our tribe, we have several clans. And each of them have distinct responsibilities and we all kind of work together as a, a larger group. So um, the Turtle Clan, we get teachings passed down to us as to what is our responsibilities. We are the people who are tend to be the intellectuals, the creative people. Also, the, the, the nickname is Stargazers because of the relationship and the stories we have about learing to read the maps of the stars. So there's oh, a really fascinating book out there. My heart, that comes right to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I, do, I, I wish I, I came prepared with a little more research. There's an amazing book written by a Canadian about the star maps. And it's a beautiful book. And I wish I could remember the name of the author. We'll have to do that mm -hmm. some other time. But um, just knowing, we, we have um, understanding and knowledge of the stars and how to navigate. Um, you know, uh, sailors have been doing it for centuries. But it's interesting to have that knowledge passed down. I actually remember my great aunt um, discussing the cycle of the moon. Now, if you remember as a kid, I was like maybe four or five when all the moon landing stuff was happening and how excited it was, you know, about the that stuff. But I remember also distinctly my great aunt saying, there's more things to the moon than just astronauts, you know, landing on it. <laughs> and uh, teaching us about like, if you're lost in the woods and it's night and how to, you know, see by the moon, how to know which direction to go in things like that really practical survival tips even um on how to see and make your way when you're lost somewhere because that's a very practical thing i don't know if um, americans can relate to this so much as maybe canadians or australians but when you're out in the bush country we're talking like in the middle of nowhere um <laughs> and you're hunting and, and you get lost from you're separated from whoever it is you're you know hunting with it's really practical skill building and so those are things that were taught to me when i was really young so so let's let's talk a bit about the moon actually because and yeah. and and how how it relates because it's very it's very interesting a lot of cultures actually you know where, where you look around the world um you know they divide the, the the year into 12 months or different things but for you or for your tribe and for many others the moon plays a very big role why is that so? Well, living according to the seasons is is pretty common with a lot mm -hmm. of Aboriginal First Nations, uh, tribal Indigenous people. Um, for obvious reasons, we we you know lived in the environment. The environment it is in itself um, how you know we direct our lives. Like it tells us what to do. 
<laughs> and so um, a lot of the names of our moons are make practical sense, you know, like a flowering moon, obviously that's when the flowers come out. You know, there's things that you do, um, you know, there's times when you gather, there's times when you, um, you know, uh, plant seeds, there's times when mm -hmm. you go fishing, um, there's certain times when you can't really do a whole lot, but go inside and contemplate and there are very spiritual times of year. So the four seasons obviously are, are you know, pretty important, but within those four seasons, there's even um, other things that we kind of, you know, uh, plan our lives by. And the Ojibwe people themselves specifically, one thing that's um, interesting about us that differs us from maybe the Plains Indians or the Southwest folk um, would be that we migrated a lot. We were on the move in the fall. You know, we're settling down in our winter camps in the summer. Um, we're out and about by the water doing fishing and other things. So there's hunting times and hunting camps. So we were not actually in one location. Maybe that's why we spread out so much. Um, we even have a creation story based on the earth on turtle's back, but specifically there was, uh, this is a book by, um, uh, the Medewin teacher, Eddie Benton Benet, it's, it's a children's coloring book, actually. Uh, it's yes. very fascinating, but it, it talks about our migration from the East Coast and mm -hmm. going westward. And one of the reasons why Mackinac Island is so special and where the, the Turtle Clan, like I know you're asking me about where we're located and who we are. Well, the Turtle Clan people wound up on Turtle Island for a reason. We found this thing called the Mega Shell. And it was part of a prophecy of a story about, okay, we have to migrate inward for the protection and survival of our people. I'm not sure if that's because there was European contact. There are even folks who believe it could be, you know, the Vikings, uh, the came and, right. and diseases spread. I mean, as early on, and there's some scientific evidence that proves that, but I mean, we had stories saying we had to move because people were dying of illnesses and um, we moved westward, and there are um, there are Ojibwe people as far west as Montana, and right. um, you know as far I, I kind of remember where as far north um, up in the Hudson Bay area. So we're like all over the place, um, but a, a part of it is, of course, we're not necessarily farmers or people that till the land. We're people that follow the the herds. Um, of animals and also just, you know, fishing. Um, one of the things we are famously known for with the French contact, of course, is our trade routes and uh, the fur trade. So um, those are just, you know, when you're following different herds of animals and doing, you know, that kind of lifestyle, you're, you're definitely going to be on the move. But one of the special things is the story is we were looking for a place that we thought, okay, this is the place and not like, other people, you know, some people may say, okay, I agree with that. This is the place, but there's going to be others who say, no, I don't agree. Let's keep moving. And so you split up and, and so on and so forth. So that's why Turtle Island tends to be uh, seen as different places throughout the United States and North America. So it's, yeah. yeah that's very interesting. I mean, Molly came straight to the point. Um, obviously, she she's very sharp and knows exactly what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about <laughs> Uh, the you yes. know the, well, and, and not only is she Shabbat. very sharp. Yeah, yeah yes. not only is she very sharp, but as uh, I shared her comment earlier, that she's um, also a member of the Turtle Clan with the Seneca yes. Nation. Yeah, yes. isn't so, that something? Yeah, yeah. she's. I, I love Molly. Um, we're both artists. Isn't that funny? Like you know, so we found mm -hmm. our calling and our purpose in life. And I love that mm -hmm. about our culture. I know other cultures have different ways of doing the same thing that we do. But one of the things I just really love about my culture is I knew growing up what my purpose was going to be. I didn't know exactly how I was going to fulfill that purpose, but I knew like, oh, that makes sense. I do art. You know, of course I'm a creative person. Oh, that makes sense. I'm interested in certain things, you know? Um, so it, it's just part of like that calling of who you are. You don't really have to go looking. Um, for example, um, a bear clan person has totally different responsibilities. And if a bear clan person just happens to be a police officer, for example, mm -hmm. they're fulfilling their calling because the bear clan, again, relationship to the animal of the bear, the bear yes. 
is like this. They, they wander around. They're not necessarily in the center of activity, but they're out and around on the periphery. Um, and so Bear Clan people were known as the protectors out and about wandering around basically to keep watch over the tribal area where people were living. Well, while they're out there, they're by themselves, right? And they are out there, maybe they see a lot of medicine where medicine is. So they bring things back. And so they're ne definitely, their responsibilities have to do with being the medicine people. Um, they, they, because it's a solitary activity to be out doing the night watch or the, you know, out hunting and gathering and bringing things back to people that they have this inner kind of way of saying, okay, I have a lot of spiritual teachings now to share with you. And we do that during times of the, the month. As a matter of fact, we have a bear moon for that particular purpose. So it tends to be like the bear clan's responsibility to kind of, um, while we're sitting around in the winter time with nothing else to do and no place Michelle, to go. Michelle, <laughs> Michelle can, can, can we maybe talk a little bit more about the turtle now? Because yeah. let's, let's let's talk about the scale and 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 just the you know just counting the let's yeah let's put that I'm going to put myself out okay. of here. Yeah, because, right, um, exactly. And I've got yeah, my, so so I'm let's just, let's talk yeah because I don't think yeah. yeah I don't think people understand like the relationship between the turtle and the moon. I mean, you mentioned yeah. So the you mentioned that like there's. Um, in, so as I understand it, this calendar, there's like 28 days in a lunar cycle. There's 28 mm -hmm. small scales around the back of each turtle, correct? Right, right. Around the back, uh, the round, the circular edge, as you can see here. I don't know if that picture, I hope it can show yes, you. We it's can got see a bunch it. of numbers. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I also just in, in this demonstration I have kind of, of just drawing, because I love to draw turtles. Um, yeah, there's 13 larger scoots. Is that, I keep saying that's the, I hope that's the right pronunciation. Or scales, yeah, that's fine. Scales, yeah. scales yeah. right around, and mm -hmm. each one of them do represent a month teaching. So, this is a great teacher for anybody to take a look at the back of this turtle and the different be uh, behaviors of the turtle as well. I think, um, the best time to do turtle clan teachings. Honestly, is this month, it starts with the colder weather. <laughs> so you can, you know, you're sitting around and your elders can, you know, begin to use some of these um, teachings as a visual reference um, to just show you, for example, um, I don't know if you can see in the picture there, it, uh, it's all in English, but um, the very first moon, for example, is... Um, it, it actually says it's February for the bear moon, Mukwa Gizis. That's why I was bringing up the bear. I was trying to kind of segue into that. There is a relationship mm -hmm. and a story that mm -hmm. can be told about the relationship of the turtle and the bear. Um, there's lots of stories of, of the bear, you know, different animals and how they relate to each other. But um, one of the things about the turtle and the bear, I remember a story um, when I was younger, it's like, you know, here's a reason why not to eat me, bear. <laughs> And he was trying really hard. And of course he has this shell to protect him, but um, the bear was smart enough to flip him over. So he basically was kind of pleading for his life. And he says, look, please put me back on my shell. I'll teach you something and you'll see why you, you need to leave me be. And so he discussed how um, it was important for people, the people to know that he had a purpose. And that purpose was to teach us what to do in each of these months and so with the bear moon of course coming first i think maybe he was trying to assuage his ego and save his life but for um for a lot of people the the bear moon which again is in february Mukwagesis, um it's a time to reflect on uh, in inside your spiritual purpose in life so so, you know, so from, just going just, right so here. michelle just going from january onwards so we start mm -hmm. off if I understand correctly, with the spirit moon, then comes the bear moon, and 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 so on. Then comes the sugar moon, and and as we go through the months. But this is specific only for for your tribe, right? That can be different for yes. different tribes. So this is this is the way you you were brought up locally. Is that right, or is there some overlap? I think that um, I 
think it does depend on the region and where someone's from. If there's an Ojibwe tribe in Wisconsin, they might have a little different. For example, I think there's one here. It's the corn moon. I think for others, it might be the wild rice moon. Now, right. that could depend right. on whether or not mm -hmm. there is wild rice growing in that region or if they're even yes. near a body of water. And as we know, in contemporary times, wild rice is um, has had issues with being, you know, um, where they traditionally were at because of pollution and um, other kinds of, you know, uh, urban growth. So where there used to be wild rice, there may not be wild rice anymore. So they switch up the names now for contemporary reasons. They'll say this is the corn moon. So I know that's one of those. But actually, the bear moon is the first moon. To be, I don't I mean to see. correct you, okay. but that's why it's because of that story about you know why I'm important, you know, and why you shouldn't eat me, bear. <laughs> so he has that first importance. So it may be February. Mm -hmm. um, we think January in the Gregorian calendar is the first one, but for us, actually, the first month it starts would with February. Be, Interesting. Would, it would be there, and in, in when you think about it, um, that is kind of the month where. Um, the 28 day cycle is actually in 28 days. So there is some kind of correlation there, but the 28 days, like she, uh, Georgia was saying, would be represented um, around the shell in the, the outer area. And then of course the inner area beginning with these um, larger um, scales here on into the, the inside right. of the turtle. So yeah. So and, you uh, jump and, and then comes the sugar moon, right? That's the next Right, one. right. Ziz Bakwat, um, I wanted to say this um, before I kind of get into, you know, some of those specific moons is that um, I, when I was in graduate school at Michigan State, I had a professor, um, Gordon Henry, he, he was instructor of writing and, and literature. He also is Ojibwe Anishinaabe from White Earth Reservation from Minnesota. And he used to challenge everyone in a class, native or non-native, to come up with creative names for each month. And we had some really fun times doing that. But each month is kind of specific to, like I said, the activities you would do. Let's say April would not be the sucker moon. Like who, who do you know? Um, goes to the store and buys sucker, the fish sucker, <laughs> not, not yes, the dumbbell right, sucker. Right. <laughs> you know, but we have, like I said, we have a specific relationship with the with that fish. Um, like I said, the smelt running, the sucker running at that time of year. Um, it, it's important to our survival because maybe all winter long, we've depleted a lot of our gathered resources from the fall. And so we don't have a lot of vegetation that we're eating and um, maybe, you know, the game is a little scarce. So mm -hmm. towards that part of the spring, I believe it's April um, when the sucker moon, you know, when, the, when right. the sucker are running. I'm, look, I'm looking here, it says April, yes. <laughs> yeah, and when, the, and when the smelts are running, you know, that's mm -hmm. really important because people are getting kind of sick, you know, mm -hmm. elders die a lot in that month. So we have this fish in abundance. What kind of fish is it? It's a bottom feeder. It's not exactly, you know, something you, you, you said you would go to Walmart and go to the store and like, I really need to have some you know, sucker in my life. <laughs> eat that instead of salmon or whatever you know that's not necessarily a prized fish but it's in abundance it's running and what i mean by running in that's um you can explain this a little bit better than i can like the smell it, it, they're in abundance it's that time of year and right. they too are following the moon and the water cycles but um it's essential to our survival to have that and even now even if we don't need that we don't necessarily um because we can go to the store and get fish any time of the year. Um, it's still part of our spring ceremonies. And it's very important, especially to give that fish to our elders and let them have it. Um, there's a medicine about it that they say it helps cleanse your blood from all of, you know, the inactive um, inactivity that you have in the winter time. It helps in that way. And we know that fish is good for us in, in the nutritional and, 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 and I, I guess the, the symbolism of the turtle is also very significant apart from, of course, the matching number of scales that match the, 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 the 13 months of, of the moon and also the 28 days of the, uh, you know, of the lunar moon. Apart from that, I think the turtle has a lot to do the connection to the earth, of course, and, mm -hmm. and its protective shell and so on. Is there anything that you would like to 
uh, talk about what the symbolism of the turtle is. And then you mentioned also the snapping turtle, which I didn't know. I was very amazed because the snapping ah. turtle is certainly somewhere where I wouldn't want to put my finger. Here. <laughs> yes. Oh, of course. And I find that <laughs> so, interesting, too, that the snapping turtle just happens to be part of Michigan's history. Um, there is a, a right-hand man of um, uh, Chief Tecumseh down towards the lower part of the state, I think, and getting closer to Ohio, who was a famed warrior, and his name was Michigan. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, there is some correlation to that being the name of the place name of Michigan. Now, Michigan oh. means little turtle, specifically snapping right? turtle. And it just, he was a very fierce warrior. He was a great general, if you would, if you want to put it in that sense. So yeah, that's kind of like the history of the place name of Michigan itself. It's not just that it's turtle or turtle clan or, or you know, the earth on turtle's back, but it's, I think it's named for this person who at the time was very famous um, and, and, uh, uh, was quite the warrior. So I think that, you know, anybody who's near a snapping turtle would, would <laughs> definitely know that you don't want to get too close. <laughs> yeah, that's special. very interesting. Yeah. And of course the turtles can get really big too. Well, oh, I'm, for I'm real, curious. yeah. Yeah, I'm curious a little bit because we started to talk about sort of the cycle throughout the year with what different months represent, but for the different moon moons represent but I mean there's also the cycle of course within each moon of you know the tides shift within that 28 right. day cycle and stuff and that is also so important for um yeah for like just natural cycles and stuff well I think um also the moon teaching specifically related to every month that falls on the elder women from my tribe and I think right. that's a natural given yeah. with the 28 day cycle and how closely we are related in terms of um, being the water protectors, being the teachers of the moon cycles. And we have moon ceremonies um, that are specifically all women. And I feel that like um, that there's some the, some really great things we can learn from just understanding the moon itself and its relationship to water. But of course, um, what else has a relationship to the earth and water would be, um, it's not, I mean, fish clan is related to turtle clan, but turtle is actually that much more important, not just because it's part of our creation story, but because he can be in both elements, the water and the earth. And so I think that's um, uh, a kind of, you know, to me, anything spiritual or anything knowledgeable or intellectual can have a very practical, you know, um, correlation. So it's not just, you know, this is my culture. Yes, this is what we understand. But again, um, like bear moon, like I said, that was really important, you mm -hmm. know, because of the relationship of the bear and the turtle, for example, but also just what the bear represents to us. Now, I think everybody who's been through this pandemic could relate to the idea that sometimes you have to just sit still and contemplate and get inside of yourself. <laughs> and that's what a bear does. They hibernate at a certain mm -hmm. time of year and they have to be still. And so it's less physical and it's more internal or spiritual at that time. Um, you know, the sugar moon, that's time to get out and tap the trees, you know, and, and get that um, maple sugar, that kind of sugar. Um, Zis Bakwade uh, is, is, the name of that moon but these bakwat is our word for sugar and that's important um teaching just just to even know how to go out and have that knowledge to tap the trees and how to do it properly and and um how to create the syrup um you know so there's uh, yeah I, I don't know if i want to go around the whole circle and say all of the different <laughs> names but um i maybe we can i should probably Post. I didn't think about this, but this I, yeah, I yeah, got well, this. Michelle, one thing I'm noticing, and maybe that's just a coincidence, I'm just noticing when I go through, I'll, can I can I just, if it's okay, just read out all the months. So Please um, do, please what, do, what because what I'm, I'm, I'm having here, difficulty so. seeing. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll read them out. So January is the spirit moon. February yes. is the bear moon, as you were talking a lot yeah, about. And then yeah, March, yeah. Yeah. and March is the sugar moon. Then yes. comes April, the sucker moon. 
Yes. We have May, the flower moon, very appropriate, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. June, the strawberry moon. Oh, July, yeah, the favorite. raspberry moon. <laughs> then mm -hmm. uh, comes the blackberry or thimbleberry moon. And, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's in between. That's, that, comes, no, that, that one is very specific. If anybody knows mm -hmm. anything about botany, thimbleberry doesn't grow just anywhere. That is definitely yeah, I certainly don't know it. <laughs> upper right. Peninsula of Michigan. Well, a lot of people don't know who what Saskatoons are, you know. Um, but the th right. thimbleberry, I know, is a specific part of the Upper Peninsula, the upper part of the Upper Peninsula, and the lower part, it's around Lake Superior. So that's interesting. interesting. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people just say berry moon for that, so they right. cover all the berries. <laughs> Because, you know, that's... Uh, and that's interesting. Shifting. So that's the only... more that, That's at least along the list. Not a, That's the 13th month that's not associated with a month. Uh, the 13th one that's not associated with a month. It's between July and August, right? And then right. comes the corn moon in August. And then right. The and like I said, yeah. and, and some people celebrate it as the wild ricing moon. Now, it's ah, interesting. Right. Um, wild rice was something that was in my region in Sault Ste. Marie, but that shifted and so it's not necessarily something that i remember or know much about because it, it no longer grows in our area um, i know there's been a lot of environmental um trying to replant it so to speak but it's one of those plants and maybe you can explain this too is that it's very sensitive um based on the water quality and and all the other factors that go along with it and i know there's invasive plants that have a lot to do with the fact that wild rice doesn't grow where it used to grow um i know it's definitely a thing like uh, we have nancy k here from wisconsin and she could probably attest <laughs> you know that wild rice is a big thing there so they would definitely yes. celebrate the wild rice moon sorry to interrupt so no that's a, that, those also it's incredibly interesting so then we come to october the freezing moon i i'm i'm a little bit surprised there <laughs> must be very i would have thought wonder why later. that is yeah. <laughs> and that's interesting well i guess um i'm in ohio now i live in it, it has not been freezing in october with climate right. change and, and the fact that i'm also way uh, further south than i used to live um it's sometimes referred to as the falling leaves moon as well um uh, for for obvious reasons but that's interesting right there when you think about it and and as he's saying these things, and you're thinking, hey, these things aren't jiving. They're not matching up with what's happening in the environment. Well, that's because mm -hmm. these teachings are much older, and now the environment is changing. So that is of concern, actually. Yes. Um, it yes. used to be that, um, oops, am I freezing? Mm -hmm. um, it used to be that uh, I remember putting my pumpkins out, and, and there'd be snow and frost on them. Uh, but... Uh, these days, I don't think that's, I mean, it was this, this year. Oh, my connection is lost. Oh, no. Uh, this year, it wasn't even close to snow weather. <laughs> True. And then, and then comes November, which is interesting. The little spirit moon. What does that mean? Well, um, that is interesting. Like you have the, the one in January tends to be called the great spirit moon or Manito Gises. Mm -hmm. And this one, um, is definitely because everything is dying. And I can actually attest to this because of the teaching of my name. De Guage is the word for fall. Um, de Guage means the season, but it's also a verb that means something that is broken or something that needs to be healed. Think of it like a broken leg. Think of the earth like a broken leg. Um, yes. Everything is dying. Everything is going to be covered up with snow, like a cast, maybe around that. So it's a time. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just. Sorry. I'm just. I just muted you, Chris, Christian. <laughs> Continue, Michelle. He's such a popular person. I know. Totally. I'm so sorry. I, mean, I, I mute my know. iPhone. It doesn't help. The stupid <laughs> iPhone goes through my whole system. I hate this. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. I my mine hardly Go ever on. rings, so um, you know you're, you're just that popular. But. <laughs> No, uh, it, little spirit. I mean, think of that time of year. Everything's mm -hmm. getting darker. Everything's, you know, um, really wet. Everything's cold. And um, maybe you just had a bad summer where you didn't have enough um, of what you've gathered. And so you're like, oh, great. Winter's coming. I'm not ready. I mean, there's a lot, you know, a lot of people feel that way about the first snowfall. 
you're like, oh no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not everybody, not everybody is excited about it. Um, so it, it's a tough time. It's a tough time of year. It's tough right. on the animals. It's tough on people. It's just tough on the plants. Um, everything. So if you're not ready, it can be pretty sad. And it's also, if you think scientifically, when the light, when our natural light tends to go away, people do get mm -hmm. depressed. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, yes. That sad, what is it called? Sad um, seasonal disorder. So well, that's why um, this probably December yeah. is the blue moon, right? That. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, they call... mm -hmm. well, like, basically, it, in, in our traditions and in what we do, we lift each other's spirits up by saying, okay, mm -hmm. we're settling in. We, we're, we have to get around and be around people. We can't be as mobile as we'd like to be. Um, we're making that transition. Let's tell stories. Let's talk more with each other. Let's be um, mindful of what's going on with our spirit so that we can... Um, Oh, I have a partial system outage. That doesn't sound good. I'm sorry. <laughs> Distracted. Um, basically, it's it's a time for inner reflection, but it's also a time to just decide, um, okay, um, while I'm sitting around here with the family, let's not get on each other's nerve. Let's, let's use this time productively. Let's make things. Um, let's tap into the wisdom of our elders who are with us and, and get to know things we need to know that will help us out. And um, it is a time when we do our storytelling. We don't do a lot of that in the summertime. We definitely do it during this time. So a lot of it is, um, you know, based on the what, what's going on with the seasons, uh, that's why it's the little spirit moon. And of course the blue moon, I think it's, um, a way of showing us there, there's going to be light. There's going to be something in the middle of all of this winter that's starting to happen. There's going to be a shift and we're going to have spring eventually. So I think that's why that's important. That's, that's, that's really fascinating. And then of course, I mean, for me as an astronomer it's it's interesting because i'm a complete lunatic i i i live <laughs> i live completely by the moon and i really mean it uh everything that's is awesome the moon. I know, and i think i can tell you should. when the next moon moon which, which is tomorrow i can tell you the next full moon and so that's on awesome. because everything for us is 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 based in, and for a lot of animals it is like that too you know all the marine exactly. animals are 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 like that and think of the intertidal zones you know the eagles again and 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 so many animals are so bound to you know to 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 the moon so what you're saying i think is is very significant it's very interesting oh i'm glad because i i really feel like um any culture has their own teachings, but it's always relevant to to all of us um, to preserve that, to know it, to understand it, and maybe to apply it, not just, you know, um, look at it from the outside and go, oh, that's interesting, but to kind of like, you know, if I were to put together what I would call the moon cycle and each moon had a different name, what would I do that according to my life cycle and how I relate to the environment and, and my world in it? You know, um, again, like I was joking with myself, like, you know, November could easily be called the moon of cyber deals or something, <laughs> the, moon, the moon of cyber shopping and online shop, because now, you know, typically that's kind of what we do, especially now with this pandemic. But that's um, very telling about the kind of environment we live in. We're very internal. We're very housebound. You know, um, at that time, we're on uh, we're online, and that's how we would prefer to go shopping. Um, I don't know about you, but I personally do not like to go on uh, Black Friday to go shopping. <laughs> I know oh, a lot no. of other people, you know, and it's oh, like, no. you know, <laughs> exactly. Not. It's talk about animalistic behavior. I mean, you know, really. So I, I, I mean. I think one of the funniest um, nicknames somebody gave for February um, I, it was like the moon of the broken snowshoe. Now, if you've ever gone snowshoeing, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, if you're lost with that, and I've never had a broken <laughs> snowshoe, but it can happen. I remember one time my, my son was really little and he couldn't fit into the snowshoes. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't a broken snowshoe story so much as um, we were out. Uh, tapping the trees um and it was february so you have like that that sort of 
warm, sunny, you know, uh, day, but then really cold night. So everything freezes back up again. It melts, it freezes, the sap is running, then it's not running. I mean, um, so you have like these really tall, like, you know, four foot drifts and then a big hole where somebody's foot went in, you know, cause they're not wearing snow shoes. <laughs> My son was like buried in yeah. snow. <laughs> And I went to go get him and my snowshoe twisted and almost broke because I'm on top of the snow trying to get down to where he is. He's like, help. <laughs> so, I mean, I can see how that could happen because, you know, some of the snow is frozen or there's a layer of frozen snow because it's melted during the day and cold at night. So it's, it, it, you could twist, you know, your ankle and all that. But um, another one would be the moon of the, the moon of the uh, stalled Chevy. I think that was one. <laughs> so I don't know whatever um, environment. Mich you Michelle, I'm, I'm just you curious. Of, um, and, uh, Georgia, if you can jump in, sorry if I'm, I'm talking. Mm -hmm. sorry. But um, I'm just curious about this, this the snapping turtle. I've never seen one. I've only seen these on YouTube. <gasps> oh, really? You've never seen this? No, oh, tell, we've got no, to fix tell me. that. Go, go, People tell surely me. know what they look like, at least. I'll find some me. pictures and add. But They're Michelle, like a you can... dinosaur. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I mean, I've seen them on YouTube, but I've never actually seen one in, in, in real life. I don't know right? if I have just... a picture. Oh my I'll, God. I'll, I'm getting a picture, Michelle. Okay. You can, yeah, I mean, they can well, bite your finger off. Oh, they, they're horrible. I've seen those movies. And they're very common. <laughs> in um, I've, seen, very them, common I've seen them break that twigs fine? that were maybe this big around. Um, mm -hmm. As a kid, you know, we're, we're dumb and we taunted them, I think. Well, we would go swimming in this river. Really? And that's where they would hang out. I, I remember seeing them uh, hanging out there and there was this old guy, like he was big, definitely mm -hmm. like, you know, he must have been dinosaur related because his <laughs> armor on his back, they have like on the back of their plates, it's kind of spiny and pointy. Wow. And of course they've got this... Um, They've got this wonderful way of, uh, you know, that their beak, you know. Um, their just, beak is how oh, I always it's identify. Crazy. It's yeah. crazy big. So you knew it was a snapping turtle. But yeah, exactly. And so we're dumb and we're like trying to get close to it with a stick. And he just went, he was faster than I thought. And he came for the stick very quickly and broke it in half. And we're talking like, you know, I guess I'm like about this big. And I'm sure and he made it look like he was just snapping a toothpick. Yes, there we go. She's got so, a yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna take myself off for a minute so that the yeah, turtle's a little fine. bit bigger. Georgia, but you can see, uh, Georgia will take care of that. That's, he's not that's happy. Great. He does not look happy there. But yeah. I remember I remember oh. him doing that. He stood there and then mm -hmm. he stuck his head out and it was almost like he's going. <laughs> <you know? laughs> like, right. like, leave me alone. I, you know, and finally he was just like, I'm not. I mean, they, he was not going to back down. He didn't really well, have to worry about anything. He was yeah. Well, I, I choose this picture for a couple of reasons. One, you can see the very pronounced like point of his beak where his mouth is yes. open. That very sharp, like that's really what's going to hurt you. But two, this person wow. is demonstrating the safe way to pick up a kind of smaller, yes. medium-sized snapping turtle. And it's not uncommon for you to find snapping turtles like in the middle of the road trying to cross or something. Really? Yeah. And so I, I show this picture as an example of like, if um, if you do happen to see a snapping turtle, it's in the middle of the road and you want to go ahead and <gasps> scoot it on Ooh. across the road to the other side, this is how you can safely pick it up and I have you know, done put the that turtle, before. Yes. Yeah, put the turtle like do. whatever direction it's trying to go. It mm -hmm. wants to go that way for a reason. So bring it across the road in whatever direction it's traveling and then put it down right so you pick it up from the back is that my understand but they can weigh something like 22 pounds or so right so you don't yeah, want to they... do that with they're, they're too big right i mean right they're yeah if smaller. they're if they're too big you don't want to do that but if they're smaller yeah. i mean i've never seen you see all the sensationalized pictures of them really big usually when <laughs> i see them they're like this size <laughs> yeah right Super old, yeah. So, but so uh, Molly is Molly is saying yeah, she Molly was bitten on the side of her foot yeah. by one when getting yeah. crayfish. We were actually getting crayfish too at the time. That's wow. interesting. But we were we were actually um, out looking for crayfish, and that's probably why he was there because they were just there was crayfish everywhere, and he was probably eating too. And we were we were fighting over the food source, you know. <laughs> yeah. So he wasn't backing down. But that is so cool. That's a nice picture, and he looks pretty small relatively. To some of the pictures you normally see that's true yeah well and i mean i guess 
uh, David Howden brings up a good point. Our international audience yeah. is certainly not as likely to have seen True. them. So I Absolutely. will um, I will get another True. picture because they deserve to see yeah. how these guys can look. The sensationalized pictures that we're kind of more familiar with. But One of yeah, the fun often things um, um, about my my uh, my association with snapping turtles as well, and that name Mishike being that warrior, like I said, he was Tecumseh's right hand man, um, was my son's nickname before he was born, uh, or mm -hmm. right after he was born, I should say, um, was Little Turtle. We kind of nicknamed him that because I had such a difficult labor. It was like he almost came out. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> then he went oh, back wow. in, and, and he really did fight uh, to come out. It turns out I had to have an emergency C-section, um, mm. and uh, he had the cord wrapped around his neck um, several, uh, four times, I think. But it wasn't through lack of trying. He was trying to come out. So um, in a lot of ways, he survived that he was fine. I was fine. But that's how he got that nickname. And then, and because I was Turtle Clan, next thing I know, we started collecting turtles and what I find interesting is that turtles, no matter where they are, I'm fascinated with sea turtles. I've never seen a sea turtle in up close and personal. Look at that. I've seen that picture. I think I've seen that picture. Yeah. Isn't he like huge? I mean, he looks yeah, like he's got so the human this, legs. <laughs> yeah, this snapping turtle it looks was, funny. I mean, it's, it's in a picture of a news item about this snapping turtle. They found it in Florida, which is in the wow. southern United States. So it had managed to get very big there. Wow. Um, and it was, I guess, a hundred pounds. Wow! Is that what they called an pounds? alligator? Is that an alligator? Alligator snapping, snapping turtle? turtle? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, that's crazy. I mean, right now it looks like he has human legs, but that's because the guy is holding him. Yes, I know. I was. I was. Yeah. I was, I was, I was <laughs> Maybe I'll just show the picture for a second. It was so carnival. It's hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless you see. Look at that! Oh my gosh! It is taking all of his strength to hold him. I would never pick up a turtle that big. Just saying. Yeah. They're not meant to be leaving the ground. I would think for reasons. Boy. Yeah, their their shell is directly connected to their spine um Ooh. like it's an outgrowth of their vertebrae which is pretty right cool. oh that's cool wow. now i'm interested in learning more about the relationship of animals to the moon cycle and of course the water um not just the water quality i mean you know all of these things have relationships to each other um and what's what's important like for example i know um that turtles are really important to water quality and if turtles go well then water quality goes with it sort of like you know any species like frogs they all have their their function they all have their the thing that they do and one of the things i know that is they they're kind of scavengers and they eat a lot of plants that need to be cleared out so that they don't overgrow the waterways um, but yeah. maybe you can explain more about well, that and, and how important turtles are to the environment yeah, definitely. And a lot of turtles, they eat um, vegetation, but they also eat a lot of fish, like that snapping turtle. Um, <laughs> you know, they can. we have turtle predators. And so if you have too many fish and stuff like that, what's happening is the fish are basically like pooping and peeing a lot. And that's mm -hmm. not great for water quality either. Right. Um, so so a good function there. Yeah. They, so they can be really important. Um, they can also be a little bit of a problem, actually, in terms of like, a lot of smaller bodies of water like lakes and streams or like ponds i would say in streams um were naturally very very shallow and mm -hmm. then people like big ponds they can swim around <laughs> in and stuff so there's a lot of examples of like turtles moving into areas that previously didn't have them and then like what happens is the turtles are basically a predator that's being introduced to an area where there was no predator before. And so it, ah. it can become very hard for some amphibians like salamanders and frogs um, that are used to these really tiny little water bodies where there's not going to be a turtle in it. And then suddenly these turtles come in and they're like eating all the baby salamanders and frogs and stuff. So they can be, you know, they're, they're very beneficial in the right place in the... Mm -hmm. Of course, as we go around mucking with water and 
water distribution, we can cause problems when we invite turtles to places they, they shouldn't be. That's interesting. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that sometimes, you know, they can be um, a problem. And what's interesting is um, in terms of a, a clan teaching, I'm not allowed to eat a turtle. That'd be like eating my relative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um and yet and yet because we're re related to the turtle so to speak mm -hmm. and we have all these teachings about the turtle there are certain times of the year where we're allowed to hunt them now we may not be able to consume them but we would um let's say there was a situation let's get you know on a practical wildlife uh, management you know we all know that um indigenous peoples were really good about going, okay, the ecology here, we need to do something, we can, you know, maybe burn a, a little bit of, you know, this underbrush here and, and take care of some things. Um, we can do some wildlife management that's part of like just living on the land. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that there's also that with, um, let's say, the deer population is completely out of control, for example, like, you know, they, they, the DNA will say, okay, you know, um, we're going to up the limit of how many deer you can hunt this year in this area or region or whatever, um, due to certain things, or, or maybe there's a limit on what you can get because the deer population is sick. Um, I think that indigenous peoples always knew that there were responsibilities to take care of that as well. And that is one of the things, um, that I myself have never, gone and caught a turtle or killed a turtle or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not saying like we go out and kill turtles, but it would have, it would be our responsibility to discuss it in a clan meeting. What are we going to do? Um, if this is, you know, it was just like, it's like a hypothetical situation, but I, I do know of situations like that, um, with different clans where they would discuss those kinds of things, uh, and their relationship to that animal, that region and what's happening and what to do about it. Yeah, we have a, um, some really interesting comments from the audience too. Um, of course, people talking about, uh, Molly talking about people buying turtles as pets and then getting tired of them. Yeah, that's a whole element oh, that's I didn't sad. even think of. Yeah, that's sad, like wow. don't let, yeah. And then, um, and then David Howden uh, said, when trapping for moths, it said that you get less on a full moon not sure the data really supports this. Oh, that's interesting. Um, huh. Yeah, I wonder if I've heard all kinds of research of the lunar cycles and how it affects wildlife. Of course, I study bats. And so there's a lot of research to people <laughs> sort of anecdotal. People say a similar thing where like there's fewer bats on the full moon potentially. And I wonder if it's like the same explanation for moths where like hmm. the idea is that the bats um, in the full moonlight, they can be seen better by the owls and owls eat bats. Mm. So like when the full moon is out, the bats are like, oh, it's kind of like too bright. I'm a little bit afraid. I'm not going to go out. I wonder if the moths are potentially thinking the same thing about their bats. They're like, oh, it's too bright out. I'm scared of the, I'm scared yeah, and, of and, 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 you, and, and you know, and conversely, I think I mentioned that before, um, you know, when we have eagle season, when when uh, the, the high salmon runs are here in, in the Fraser River and in in, around, um, uh, Chilliwack and Harrison Mills. Um, conversely, if there is a full moon, you'll see eagles out on the flats uh, um, uh, e eating salmon, which you would never see at night. So, you know, you you get both you get both situations. Oh wow! Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it must be fascinating. I've never seen it, but I've heard others. I was always unlucky every time it was full moon. It was cloudy, so the eagles didn't come out. Mm -hmm. But I was always waiting for this big moment to photograph it because nobody's ever done that. So it's a oh, really great topic. Yeah, of, yeah it's, uh, it's, the, the it's it must be moon. incredible. It must be yeah, incredible. That's the that's thing. If, yeah, if you're a predator, then the being seen isn't quite as scary, right? If you're that's at the top, why. like that's an why. owl or an eagle. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. I really like that um. picture of the moon when you when we first uh, uh, you opened up the broadcast. Where did you oh, yeah. take that picture? That is really oh, that cool. that was my own. But I but I've got quite a few that I took, you know, <laughs> with my roof camera of of the rising moon. Some beautiful uh, uh, ones. I should I didn't have time to. I couldn't find mine in that short time. But but yeah, I've I've got um, access to a, a big. Um, you know, I subscribe to big. Um, a sort of video 
things. So I always look for appropriate things that fit our <laughs> theme. That's where I got it from. That was cool. That was really cool. And um, just the, the water cycles and, and how creatures that live in the water yeah. and their um, relationship to the moon, that would be fascinating in and of itself. Oh, there, there's, you know? there's so much to be said about that. I can give you an example. I mean, we have be great. In, 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 in here in Boundary Bay, we have one of the most productive intertidal zones in, in the world. In fact, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And um, that's also why eagles come there at a certain time. So the intertidal zone is, is, is very critical. Of course, it's related to the moon, right? Every, it's, uh, you, you know, you get the different um, uh, effects when the spring tide and so on, where, where you get these extreme tides and so on. And, and eagles, for example, know very well uh, um, how to make use of it because as the water goes back again and the moon pulls in the opposite direction and the tide, you get these small um, pools and in those pools you'll find certain fish they call midship midshipmen fish they're very interesting oh. that's another discussion and they're very very soft and and um, especially the juveniles like that because they're very bad at hunting so really oh. the whole of, of, of the of the beach then at that time in may june is covered with eagles it's absolutely amazing and they it it's true. just before low tide i know exactly when to come in so in the so sometimes low tide coincides with an early morning and that's the best time for photography and it's you only get one opportunity like that in the whole year and if you're lucky and everything comes together you'll get some amazing just some some absolutely amazing shots there so yeah it's just beautiful I, and i i love frogs in the springtime i don't know about mm -hmm. anybody else i especially like spring peepers and um you know but even though frogs aren't necessarily like um like <laughs> one of our clan relations it kind of is important you know to know about like the health of frogs and what's going on with frogs but i think they're kind of a cool nocturnal animal that most people don't think about and so um i'd like to know more about like just animals and their relationship to the the moon cycle and um and the tides and all of that that's fascinating to me but uh again um we didn't have like um, constellations, so to speak, but we definitely mm -hmm. use the sky similarly. And again, um, I wish I could go into further teachings. I don't feel like I really had enough cultural teaching in that area only because my great aunt who had a lot of that knowledge passed away when I was about 15 or 16. So that knowledge kind of went with her and, and it's kind of sad in a way. She was very, very wise and very important. And mm -hmm. I do believe that there's a lot of stories, again, relating to the turtle. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to have to leave because I have a knock on my door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah, realize that's... what that was. <laughs> But, yeah. well, but we are yeah we are at an hour here and yeah already um, oh my goodness yeah i, can't believe it. <laughs> I know so like i i will say um well i guess i'll let you go if you have knocking so thank you so much michelle <laughs> for, for joining us and sharing what you do yes. know with us thank you oh, so right. much it was an absolute well, thank pleasure you for letting me do this i, I hope to um, flesh this out later in an art broadcast um I'll be right there. Cool. Yeah. So everyone, <laughs> so everyone, as she's running away, everyone, if you're if you're here, definitely subscribe or follow Michelle if you don't already. Um, oh, think, and then you, you can hear more on her upcoming art broadcast. It sounds. Yes. Thank you guys for stuff. inviting yeah. me and for thinking of me. I apologize. I wasn't as prepared as I would have loved you were to very have been. Prepared, but I, I didn't. Like, I didn't notice anything. I haven't. Uh, I haven't broadcast in a while, but I'm so glad I came back uh, into broadcasting with the two of you. You guys are wonderful. Yeah. I'll talk Thank to you later. You. We'll have to do another collab some other time. And yeah, yeah we definitely. can get Molly in next Thank time too. Um, yeah, oh, for definitely. Real. Yeah, I mean, that She's would be great. Yeah. Because, yeah. So. Yeah, we'll yeah Molly, one. I did. Um, I did try to invite her in the chat to oh, join right. us, and she said Aww. she's cooking, she's meal prepping, preparing dinner <laughs> we'll right do now. Yeah. So, okay. so Some thank you for time. your chat contributions, though, Molly. Bye, guys. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Michelle. Thank you, for thank having you. Me. Thank you Michelle. Right. Thank you. Okay, right. good. Yeah, so, I mean, we didn't get, uh, have as much time to maybe talk about some of the wildlife component mm -hmm. with the, like, moon and lunar mm -hmm. cycles as we had hoped, but Christian and I are talking mm -hmm. next week about 
wildlife in windows, which is a related oh, a sort of yeah, a related topic. Christian's like, what are we talking about next week? I suddenly wildlife... remember my homework, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wildlife in windows. And a lot of that is really related to um nighttime stuff and how animals are interacting with night and like reflections and light pollution at night and stuff like that. So um, give Christian and I both a follow if you want to hear more about that next week. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. Yeah, we got we're nearing the end of the year and yeah, we got. Uh, yeah, so let's let's do that next week and then we'll go on from there. So wonderful. Well, that was yeah. exciting. It was something very different today, Georgia. I thought I thought it was mm -hmm. really interesting. I I learned a lot. I I learned so much by preparing <laughs> before these shows. I just yeah. Really got, it's just and amazing. actually, right. Let me put I I'll put a couple of more links in the chat here to some oh, of yes. the things that I was reading beforehand. Some of the mm -hmm. articles that talk more about one of them is um, this moon teachings. Yes. Um, taking care of each other spirits mm -hmm. and another is um oh this is the link you sent me initially the 13 mm -hmm. grandmother moons yeah that's interesting isn't beautiful yes mm -hmm. yeah. yeah before yeah, i really understood the topic this week christian was sending me these links and i was like what what is <laughs> <laughs> i have from the without context i was a little bit confused at first but then i got there uh, you yeah. got there very quickly very quickly yeah. so <laughs> oh and then yeah and here's another link on um the ojibwe moons specifically so those are all in the in the chat on haps and um thank you everyone for joining and for all your comments it looks like we're already at 1500 views over yeah, 100 incredible. comments in the chat yeah. um nine different awards so thank you to oh all that's a, that that's very awards. generous of all of you really thank you so much really yeah thank you. yeah that oh that money from the awards like helps you know motivate us to keep going and it broadcasting and, and taking some time to put together this stuff each week so thank you to frankman and cat gold and lucia ibar and Lindsay badger david howden um Gerald Benton Art, Anthony, thank you, and Jeremy Stoltz, Peter Bittner, and Eric Hypes. Thank you all so much for your awards. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. And next time it's all about windows and 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 wildlife. And you can see that's a big topic. So look yeah. forward to that. Yeah. Bye everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.